Hello, everybody. Today is uh, October 26th, uh, 2022. This is the Misfit Happy Hour. Uh, my name is Chris Cady. This is brought to everybody by Sanglucci, the, the guys in uh, trade space in Puerto Rico, Ranchero, who teaches and trades out of uh, Trade the Post, Charlie Bathgate, who's the CEO, and, uh, and myself, who sometimes teaches psychology there. Uh, today's guests are, are kind of an interesting combo. Uh, I have Nick Lenz, who is a UFC fighter. And or, is that right, Nick? That's correct. That's correct. And I was my in friend, UFC for, for about a dozen years. So. And my friend, his meditation teacher, Matt Lombardo. And Matt and I went through a 14 year meditation program that was by invitation only. Uh, it, was, it was free of charge. And we had some pretty high esteemed teachers. And so I'm sure everybody out there wants to know, first and foremost, um, what is, you know, Nick, where are you now? You're no longer a fighter. Well, I mean, I am a fighter. I could always go back to it. But uh, I did retire from the UFC just recently. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So and then, you know, now I pursue I, but for about five years at the end of my uh, fight. Well, before the end of my fight career. I was looking at what I was going to do in life. And I thought maybe start a gym, maybe do some other things. I, I actually started an online business thing. I did it for a while. It was actually pretty successful, but uh, I, I hated it. I hated everything about it. And what I always wanted to do was be in finance. And I had been trading up to that point. And so I said, screw it. I'm just going to start trading. And I, I sold everything that involved all the businesses. I, I jumped on my plans of starting a, a gym and stuff. And then I uh, started trading. So that's what I do now. I, I trade and I'm a, I'm a coach at uh, Kill Cliff MMA, which is one of the top MMA gyms in the world. So I'm what a coach part-time. And then the other part, I run my own money. You know, if someone walks in and wants to be an MMA fighter, can you, can you tell them right off the bat that they don't, they stand a chance or they don't stand a chance? <laughs> Well, I, if anyone comes to me and says they want to be an MMA fighter, I tell them, you know, there are easier ways to make a living. That's for damn sure. You know, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, but if it's something you want to do, you know, like just, just be prepared for how difficult it is, you know? And uh, I think very few people understand just to get to the high level of anything, just one, you need a lot of luck. You need luck on your side, just like in anything else. You need a lot of you need a lot of help with your training partners. You got to be at the right gyms and stuff. And then also you just, you have to have a lot of God-given talent. Unfortunately, when it comes to, to fighting, you, you have to be born to be able to do it. And there's a lot of things that can take you out. But if you want to do it, you know, now it's getting easier. So, you know, there's a, there's a little more money involved now. But in general, uh, I can tell. I can definitely tell. I give everybody a chance and uh, when they come to my gym and, I put on the gloves and I see what they can do. You know, I say, beat me up. See what if you can beat me up. They can't, you know, cause they're new, but you know, but, but the point is, is I can, I can pretty much tell right when a guy walks into the gym, if he has a future or not. And, and Matt, can you, Matt um, Lombardo has been a, a highly esteemed teacher of both the physical and the uh, mental aspects of the, uh, should we say the yogic traditions? Is that right, Matt? Sure. And uh, can you, Matt, can you tell, are people unnatural? Do some people take to it? You know, if you mean flexible, like some people are physically flexible to do postures. Right. But it takes more than that. And some of the best I've seen uh, are not at all. That's the very opposite. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know it. It really is about how they approach it and how much time they put in. You know, like, are they training? once a month are they training four times five times a week like that 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 has more to do with it with that stuff was like nick I any... wasn't natural myself like personally yeah, me, I, I, you know me, i'm not me, flexible me, or a pretzel i don't, right. don't like that even <laughs> yeah i appreciate by the way i appreciate that about classes that you compensate for the fact that we're not bendy flexible when i attend class was nick any good as a meditator yeah. Well, he, the best part about Nick was he, he listened and he did the work. He did all the sessions. There was never like, I didn't do it today. 
I mean, unless he was lying, but I, I don't, I don't I know him right. the kind of person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, and when you teach meditations to, to athletes, I mean, there's no quiz or anything, right? It's, it's almost like it's, uh, this is the task, get after it. For, I think for people who are watching, there is a progression um, involved in meditation. And so Matt's progression, what progression are you teaching, Matt? Um, I teach a basic or kind of non-secular, uh, or let's say secular, right? It's, it's not like it belongs to any religious tradition, even though there are traditions in, let's say, Hinduism or Buddhism. I'm trained in the Buddhist stuff, which is very simple, just like you're breathing your mind right there. So you start very simple things like, you know, counting the 10, feeling the floor, basic awareness stuff, basic. I mean, there are technical names for it. Like there's shamatha meditation, which is calm and abiding. But yeah, you start like anything, like if you were at the gym and you were starting out with the weights and you start out with light weights and then you build up. So yeah, that's how I teach. That's how I was taught. And that's how I like to teach it. Yeah. What you, you said something yesterday. Uh, I went to Matt's class, everybody, which is very good. It's at St. Mark's yoga. Um, you said something about the breath can, if you need to stabilize the breath to stabilize the body. Did I say that? That sounds pretty good. I don't know. Um, yeah. Like the, the breathing is the intermediary between the body and the mind. So you're going to stabilize your body, you know, your breathing, it's, it's right there. You don't have to go anywhere for it. Uh, and the first part of it is like, land your breathing in your body and then observe how your attention moves. So it's, it's really uh, economical for that, for that case. I'm, um, I don't remember exactly that, what I said, but that's, that's roughly the approach. And really anybody who has a mind and can breathe can learn to meditate. It's not for like, people that, you know, only want to go to India or, you know, eat uh, a spoonful of lentils a day. Like it's for, it's for beer drinking people. Um, Nick, how is it, how is it that you can get hit and still breathe? That's right. Cause essentially oh. your breath is a mental function, right? Breath. In other words, it's, it's controlled by your brain. In other words, if you're nervous, you hold your breath. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I mean, I mean, that's like a, it's something you have to remind younger fighters like to breathe, you know, to like, to, to be in the moment or whatever. Right. I mean, I don't know, as far as fighting goes, I mean, I sort of had the advantage of growing up in a bad neighborhood. So I got in fights all the time. So I've been fighting since I was a little kid. So I really don't, it really doesn't scare me. And, uh, I was always just naturally drawn to it, but when, as far as like breathing and, and, and all that stuff, I mean, in sports, it's just people overcomplicate stuff, right? Like you don't have to think about breathing, right? Mm -hmm. You just, if you, if, if, and it's a little easier in fighting because someone's trying to kill you. Right. So, yeah. so like, like breathing is not, is, is, you know, unless they're choking, choking you, you know, that's kind of the least of your worries. So it's pretty hard to, to hold your breath in a fight, you know, you but. Do you have an organizational principle? Like, are you following the Asian martial arts or is there a, um, it's just like anything goes in a sense, it's a street fight. Well, I'm trained in all kinds of things, right? So, so I'm trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm trained in regular Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I'm trained in, I had, I had Kung Fu teachers when I was young, you know, a lot of that stuff is make believe, but there's some good things to it. I had uh, boxing trainers, kickboxing trainers. Uh, I, ha I, ha I, was, I wrestled for the University of Minnesota, one of the top places in the world. And I also started training for the Olympics before I was going to uh, switch to fighting. So, I mean, I've had, I've had uh, d I, the, all, the disciplines I know for, for as far as fighting. And also I'm like, one of my biggest advantages in fighting was I have a good mind for it right i what what i lacked in some physical abilities uh i made up for my ability to understand fighting and so that's one of the good things as being a coach is i understand fighting on a deeper level than most people so i really understand the technique the philosophy all of it and so it's a very different it, it's different but when it comes to like learning styles and stuff most people like if you if you if you go to a, a gym and they teach karate right like right. or or you go to a gym and they teach some kind of kung fu or whatever most of that is make-believe 
And so like, if you walk up there and you, and you, and they get punched in the face once they're going to panic, they're going to be terrible. They have no talent. It's all, it's all kind of like a dance almost like they're just kind of dancing with each other when, but they don't really know when it comes time to fight how to fight. So, so most people that I would say fighting in general is one of the least understood concepts in, in sports as far as, and, and, and the sad part is every man thinks he can do it. But when they went in fact, when in fact, most almost 99.9% of men have no idea how to fight what's going on in a fight or, or anything to it. But it's just like anything else, you know, I mean, any, any, any idiot can pick up their phone and trade, right? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times they can do better than us when it comes to that for a while. So it's, it's like, you know, it's like anybody can do it. Uh, but I don't have a specific teacher, but I've had very many good coaches in my life. And so I'm well trained in in a variety of martial arts. Well, hey, Nick, what would you tell a meditation teacher on how to trade? On how to trade. How to you trade. Know, how, you know, how do we, Matt, <laughs> I know Matt trades crypto. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I wouldn't say I trade it. I'd say I bought it and haven't oh, done okay. it. But yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, trading is, uh, it's one of those things where like uh, the concept is easy right? Like I, like I tell people this all the time, when I first started trading, um, I, I, I invested in stuff, but in 2018 at the, there was that Christmas Eve massacre. Oh, brutal. Right. And that's the, that's when I started day trading. So I bought the bottom of that. And so I turned like a $10,000 account into a lot of money because everything I did was right. I was just flipping stuff and it, like it went up for months, like without a downtick. And so my very, my very first, you know, foray into uh, trading. Nice uh, like timing, I was, kid. I was just printing money, you know, I was just lucky. So I was like, this is, this isn't so bad. This is pretty easy. I like oh, this. Okay. Now that we have the backstory, what are you going to teach Matt since Matt's taught you all this time? Well, no, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to teach him. And it's like, uh, I thought I knew what I was doing for years. Right. And there's like, there's kind of this, like, there's like this old story about like Dale Earnhardt. Do you know who that is? He's like a race car driver. Yeah. NASCAR. Yeah, so he was a race car driver. When he first started, he just pedaled to the metal everywhere. And so he was winning all these races and people were like, how are you so reckless? Like, how can you do this? And, and the old guys that he, the old guys that he raced with, they, they all said it's because he's never hit anything hard yet. And so that's why he had that like fearlessness. And then shortly after that, he got into a crash, a really big crash. And then he had to relearn how to race because now he was scared to death of it. Mm. And that's sort of what happened to me in trading. So that's what I would say. You, when you start trading, you think you know what you're doing until you hit something hard. And then when you hit something hard, the, the game changes, you know? Well, all right. Now, what's your exact advice to Matt? Like, come on, be like, all right, here's the, here's the instruction. Like, all right. Like Matt's the mental coach, right? Like keep it glued yeah. together when, when it gets hard. I don't know. I don't know what to tell about trading crypto. Okay. Sell it. That's what I would tell them. Sell the shit. <laughs> there you go. That could be a buy signal, man. <laughs> right? we don't know. Yeah. If like, know. someone says, I don't know, and then gives you advice, do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so people are probably, you know, curious about the meditation thing and in regards to trading. And do you think it helps, Nick? Uh, it helped me. It definitely helped me. I, I mean, medit when I started meditation training with Matt, I, uh, the, how I came into it, I, I, I was very confused, right? I had this picture of like what meditation was and I was like, com I was like completely wrong, right? Like I thought like you'd kind of sit there and like, I don't know, almost imagine yourself somewhere else. And it was like, you know, like kind of, it's like, like you're, daydreaming almost or something like you're like you're like producing some kind of uh, atmosphere or something and, and and it turned out to try to be like you just need to like silence your mind and and that was like a different approach you know I wasn't I wasn't quite ready for that like I, it wasn't anything I had imagined I thought you would like think a lot and Matt's like you know, count to 10 and don't think about anything. And, I was like, and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, really? That's what we're going to do? Like count to 10 and not think of anything? He's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I just did it. And then 
you know, like it, it was amazing how how difficult it was at first for everybody. Like, watching. He's like, he's like, we're, we're going to do it for three minutes. And I'm like, three minutes. We're going to count to 10 to three minutes. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> like so I was in there like I'm like, one, two, three. And then I'm like thinking about like shit's popping in my brain a million miles an hour. And I'm like, wow, this is a little more difficult than I expected. Um, for everybody watching, they make it um, very a simple thing, such as your breath and counting to 10, watching your breath for 10 breaths. Um, for that reason, um, because it's so simple that the, the mind will want to throw thoughts and or concepts into your concentration, so to speak. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, the, mi the mind is just going to move. You're not going to stop it, right? Unless you hit yourself on the head with a ball peen hammer, which <laughs> I wouldn't recommend like it's just getting better on the signal and dismissing the noise. And when you, and everybody, like when you turn your attention in for the first time, it's like, wow, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of just distraction and stuff. And that's, that's the real, the, the battle. And that's where it starts. And there are visualizations and traditions of that. And, and I, I believe having a, a flexible strategy, but you have to have that, basic foundation of like okay so this is what's going on hey and you remember uh bruce uh nick we have a friend named bruce who did a lot bruce klein who did a lot of our retreats we had to required to do retreats and bruce was saying that it's like an onion and you think you're getting somewhere did this happen with you nick like you thought you were getting somewhere and then you realized oh man there's a whole nother layer well like he said he did we, we did do visualizations and stuff later but there was like a certain that that like counting thing I was actually pretty good at. Like I could really I could really get into that and I could like really understand it. And then we did a couple breath ones and we could really understand. It. And then we did this one where you like focus on what you hear and you kind of try to hear like different things and then you try to tune them out. And I tried to do that and it it really did melt my brain. Like I I hated every second of it. Like it was so uncomfortable for me and like I, like I, like I, when, when we first started, he's like, we're gonna do this three minute thing. I got up to like, you know, 15 minutes, pretty good on the other way. I tried this hearing thing that we did. And like, I, I never have quit at anything, but I, that it really bothered me. It and, really and, was it made, it was so hard and so uncomfortable. And so, so I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but if you guys want to hit him up, hit Matt up and try it and see if you can do it better than me. Cause I, it drove me nuts. Um, John Yates, who's, who's um, Indian or meditation teacher's name was Kula Das, wrote the book called The Mind Illuminated, has since passed on, um, was teaching in northern Massachusetts, just outside of Harvard and MIT. I was there for two weeks with Bruce. And, and one of the things that uh, he said was that you use the noise that's a distraction to remind you to stay on task, so to speak. Yeah. As though you flip the no you flip something that's an annoying noise to a positive, like oh, like this is just a like you know that that becomes a reminder that you're trying to stay on task. In fact, meditation is somewhat of a of a balancing act between being too excited and and falling asleep, and uh, which leads us to an interesting question. Um, Matt and I were talking about. Um, in the meditation world, the spiritual practice world, the, the awareness, the higher realization, the California mindset and all the hallucinogenics and micro dosing that are out there now. Do you have any experience with that at all, Nick? Have you done any of those? I know a lot of people that do micro dosing and that, uh, that have tried everything. I mean, in athletics, uh, you, there are athletes that will try literally anything to get it to get some kind of advantage. I mean, I don't personally do it. I mean, I can't, I mean, I have kids now. So like even the thought of like having drugs around makes me, it would make me nervous as hell that someone come take my kids away. Yeah, so, not so, yeah right. Not suggesting that. So, 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 but, but, but I know a lot of, I know a lot of people who have uh, had great benefit of microdosing like their own shrooms that they grow and stuff like that. And they, 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 they say it's a very positive experience. I know in athletics, it's, it's a, uh, it's definitely been a thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of athletic training like that that it it hits uh, it hits fighting first. You know, there's you a must, lot of things right. Like, yeah, you guys yeah. are like the first frontier. Like try it, try it with these guys. They'll <laughs> they'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of stuff like that, like that we that we were doing, you know, 10, 20 years ago. 
that slowly becomes popular into the mainstream in in uh, athletics and because athletics is one of the only pure well not the only i would say trading is similar but it's one of the only pure competitions left right like so like where you're literally like you're only succeed if you win and and you're like put in a position to where like your money, your wealth, everything it, it revolves around just, just, it doesn't matter how hard you work. It doesn't matter how many hours you put in. It doesn't matter anything. It's just, do you get the result? Right. And so that's where a lot of things are built in that, you know, that's why sports are such a, a, a building ground for, for society. You know, that's why they, that's why people get it, get motivated by basketball games and stuff because our regular lives have kind of got rid of that they kind of push that to the side and now we have like normal jobs and it's you, that pressure isn't on you. So you, when you don't have that pressure, you don't really create new things. So that's why I think a lot of things uh, come from the athletic world. You're right. I mean, we're drifting into a more philosophical question. I wanted to stay with Matt and, and because in Matt, Matt's experience, we've had many spiritual or uh, shall we say meditation instructors who use ayahuasca and we have had friends who say that you can walk there or you can drive there. And they claim that, you know, the microdosing, et cetera, is the equivalent of driving there. And I just, Matt, Matt, of course, has a, a much more experience with that conversation than I do. Well, I mean, any of those, you know, those are all peak experiences. It's inducing some kind of peak experience. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, taking an elevator up to the floor, the top floor, but you got to learn to walk up the stairs. And so th those things, while they might give you a glimpse, um, what happens is it gets reinforced that I need to do it again to get to this place. And, you know, regular meditation practice is like, we're not interested in just warp driving to, to, to the Oort cloud or to, to Oz and then visit the Oompa Loompas and then give us, some kind of, you know, message like that's, that's amateur hour. Like we're not, that stuff is like, it's, I've heard it said with like, you know, there are those things to know, just to get an understanding that there are other layers to things like, let's say the light spectrum or sound, right? Like there's places in the light spectrum we can see that other animals can or can't or hearing and those kind of, you know, hallucinogens do that but i don't i'm not interested in that i mean i don't i don't i've done them but i don't recommend it because it's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like getting a prostitute is like a two thousand dollar a night prostitute who's hot yeah now go out and get that on your own like go go do that on your, it's different right like we're yeah. not the caliber is yeah, you could go and do that and think that you're doing great, but what you did is you just bought some limited time experience and it's not even really you, it's it's something different. So meditation is really like, you just get up and go to the gym and you don't, you know, you just do it. You just do it regularly. You build it and the expand, the, the value of it is on, it, it's gonna show up and it's gonna be there for whatever you are doing. So trading and things are volatile. The, yeah. uh, the, yeah, the, it is right. <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday I was talking with Matt, and he described an ayahuasca um, sort of spiritual experience as a postcard. Would you say a postcard? Postcard, yeah. One of my teachers said, like those, he calls those postcards from the pure land. Like, hey, here you go. You went and did this thing, and um, you got a glimpse of something fantastic. But it's like getting a postcard from a, a beautiful place, and not living there yourself. Like what you're looking to do is build your attention and mind in a way where your mind is clear, but you had didn't have to take some kind of uh, drug or ally plant or whatever it is that's the word uh, to achieve that. It's like it's like people that get like muscle implants. You ever see these? People, like they got like pectoral implants or abs. Like okay, that kind of looks like it, but you know if I push it, there's nothing there. It's it's. It's the same thing. Like, okay, you had an insight. It's like I used to do that with music, like years and years ago, like smoking pot and thinking, wow, everything that I play on the guitar is brilliant. Everything that I write down is inspired. And it's not. <laughs> and that's where the meditation stuff starts. It's like, yeah, things exist, inspiration happens, but 
you have to be willing to really, um, you know, like, like with you guys doing, if you're trading, like you're yeah, up, they're... you're down. Like you can't just, if you would, it was only up, I mean, that would only be half the equation. You're, the value of what you're doing is like, well, what am I like in the face of the up and down, right? You, yeah, you remember when we were asking the monks about, you know, you're, you're saying this is a spiritual path and, and we asked them, you know, where does the rubber hit the road? Like, you know, where, what's the, where's the bottom line in this whole thing that we're meditating towards? And the monks turned to us and they said, you know, there has to be an actual bottom line positive result or it's magical thinking. Right. And, and also another thing they said was if you do the ayahuasca, you're burning up all the karma. Remember that? Uh, I, I, I do recall that. Yeah. They were like, I mean, the value of this would be like, you met, you know, you get a meditation practice going and then you get fired or you lose a huge amount of money and you go from like a hundred percent freak out to like 50% freak out where you're like, okay, I don't like it but I'm able to manage this as an adult with a clear attention versus I've hit the bottom. So because things are going to happen, you need some kind of a tool. Luckily your mind is that tool. It just needs to be kind of conditioned in a better way. And that's really all meditation is. Drugs can't do that. Drugs are, are magical thinking kind of stuff. It, 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 they're false in a way. Sometimes they, for people, they can, uh, bring things out of people that need to come out as far as, you know, their, their own psychology and stuff, but mostly it's a distraction. Like all these kids smoking weed on selling it on the street. That's like, now weed is so great. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going to, you know, Hey, Nick, I got a question, right? At the highest levels of sport, is it mental failure? when someone crumbles like at the highest levels right because you're all physically conditioned right no one just gets tired anymore right no no i mean there's two ways one right one is is you could get lucky or unlucky and get caught with something you didn't see right and then you would crumble right and then and then the other one would be it's such it's at the highest level people don't understand like at like at the highest level of fighting if you take the top 15 guys right Let's say there's the top 15 guys in the world. The highest I ever got was I was I was ranked fifth. So I got to fifth in the world. And so if you take the top 10 guys, essentially there, like you said, there is no difference. You know, like like that we're all we all understand fighting. We're all super athletes. We all know what we're doing. And really, the only thing that separates it is is what's going on in your personal life. Uh, how well are you handling? Uh, distractions outside the game how are you did your camp go well did you let did you let life ruin it for you and so like just the smallest of errors is is what changes the game when it comes to to those those five people do you know if any of the other any of the other fighters had meditation coaches uh yeah i mean they do yeah yeah we have they they do but it's it i don't know it's different you know there's a lot of there's a lot of fakes. There's a lot of real ones. So, I mean, it's a, it's a different game, you know, it's a, it's, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe, but I would say, I would say everybody is mentally tough at the top, right. They, or else they wouldn't be there. Right. Right. I would say everyone uh, has some kind of edge, you know, that other people don't. And I would say a lot of it comes down to just timing, how your personal life is. And, and also like a, a, a little bit of luck. Hey, Matt, how, yeah, that's great, Nick. Hey, Matt, how messy is the process of trying to actually learn the meditation game? I mean, how messy is it? It's, it's, uh, it depends, you know, it's kind of, it's like a, it's like a dentist office, man. When was the last time you went to the dentist and your mouth was bloody and like, wow, it depends. It's about putting in reasonable time and building it. So there's no like, well, I'll do it when I have the money and I have the house and I like just wherever you are, that's exactly where you start and you start for a minute or two. And that's where you, you know, so everybody's got personal life stuff. There's the outer world and how we respond to it. 
it depends on, you know, some people have different situations, but uh, it, it is messy. It's not going to be, I mean, it's like any, it's like in a way like therapy where they say, Oh, I'm going to go to therapy and get, get insight and get better. And then you go and like the first, it's like worse, like, Oh, and all of a sudden there's all this stuff. Which yeah. is a, which yeah. is a normal response in therapy apparently is that people get worse before they get better. Yeah. It's going to feel like, you know, you hate it and it's like, okay, but the value of it starts to pop and um, you know, it's just going to, it really brings up the best in you meaning like, you know, I think people think that meditators mean like you're going to have to start wearing baggy pants and go to like jam band festivals and you're going to have to start like it couldn't be further from the truth. Like there's none of that stuff. You know, like, you, you, you don't look lose at, your edge. You, you look at you look at Nick and he's got like grit written all over him. Right. He's got like grit. Isn't that isn't is essentially like a meditator of one person who's going to face down their yeah, own. Yeah, it's it's the, it's a fighter you have got to be a fighter if you, it's not for the faint of heart um and and only the strong survive with that like it really is the case like if you're interested in getting the edge and it's not just going to be reading another book or some it's like you have to work on yourself that's your mind and then your response to things that that the fluctuation which is guaranteed that things are going to flux you think you guys you guys really think that it's like uh that it's it's like when i when when i studied the meditation right and i did it like it, it wasn't hard yeah but it, like it's like i had a goal to 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 understand it and to like you know get into your mind and stuff and so i had a good time doing it even though it was painful but maybe it maybe it's different you know maybe maybe like Maybe it is different, but like, I don't know. I, when I did it, it's like, I see the benefits. I wanted it to help with my fighting. And like, overall, I don't think it was like so scary or so painful, even though it was painful, but like, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that as much. Like I, like, I thought it was a good time almost, but, but I guess I am a fighter. So, and I have trained forever. So maybe I enjoy suffering a little more than most. <laughs> I was going to say quick, <laughs> Nick, quick question. Were you attached to the results? of the meditation or did you just go in curious curious yeah yeah i was i was more i wanted to know what it was how it was like i wanted to i wanted the benefits right right and yet and so, the, and so then i went in and i i i got what i wanted you know like i i, and I the started and the temptation is from a lot of people they just want the answer yeah but he's right as far as the benefits like you got to sell yourself on the benefits why am I going to get up early and do this? Because right. right? I want the benefits, you know, I want the car. Okay. I'm going to put the money away and then I can put the, and then I can get it. Yeah. I want to be clear of mind. I want to be the best in my field. I want to have the edge. I want to see things that people don't that's right there in front of our faces. I don't want to be taken out by things that used to take like, okay, now I'm willing to do the work, but you have to get yourself excited for like, yeah, why would I want to do this? And I'm going to sweat a little and I'm going to get cranky and my back might hurt. And Okay, but then you get used to that. And then it does become a pleasure. Like it really is like when you're still and when things kind of click, we could say, put it in a colloquial. Right. It really is like, oh, that's, that's why it's been around for thousands of years in different ways. Like there's something very powerful and simple, um, and it's, it's harder to give it up once you do that. Like, you know, it's like getting healthy, getting trained well. You don't want to lose the muscle. You're like, I really, you know, you built up to running or, um, or whatever. Uh, but in the beginning, it, it can be hard. But if the best do it, I want to be the best. So why wouldn't I start? Why, why does it have such a hippy-dippy reputation? Because they fucking ruined it, man. They ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> Be I, because i think at a certain point culturally people were turning tuning into things and the eastern influence was really big uh and it it, it kind of mixed with the with the drug culture um but it, the reality of it is it's it, it's not like that you don't have to start wearing pastels you don't have to start uh take, calling yourself asparagus or something like <laughs> That's that's amateur hour again. It's or that's a different decade where it was like needed. But you're not going to become, you know, you don't even have to light incense. You don't have to 
You don't have to sit cross-legged on the floor. You don't have to grow a beard. You don't have to, you know, start wearing a jumpsuit or whatever you're supposed to. Like, I love debunking all that stuff because it's like, look, it's not, um, it's not what you think it is. And, and if you put a little time in, that becomes apparent. But it's almost like describing a dream to someone else. Like, you can't really describe it. You have to be there to do it. Yeah, I mean, we, you, we can show you how to get there uh, as long as you put some time in. I mean, how much time? To, here's a great question then. How much the guy watching, the woman watching, how much time? Less than two minutes. <laughs> 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 yeah, like Nick, we started it with a minute, right? Like we're going yeah. to we're gonna do this yeah, for like a one minute. minute. Set your timer for a minute. And then you build after, okay, we, I'm going to do a minute for a week and then two minutes and three minutes. And you would build up 15 minutes plus. Um, it really is like that. You just have to decide that I have a minute. And if you don't have a minute, you need 25 minutes, but we don't start you out with 25 minutes, right? It's like anybody can start this from any place in their life at any place on the planet, Zero money down. Um, and Nick, hey, um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap here. It's five o'clock. Any any last words to people who are thinking about trading, and meditation, and and your path, and uh, any warnings or any pieces of advice you want to give them? <laughs> uh, I well, first, I guess if you're if you're watching this and you're a trader, you know, and. Uh, and you still survived up to this point, I would say like, congratulations, you know, like, 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 like you've done a, you've done a good thing, you know? And I think, uh, I mean, I have all kinds of theories about how uh, the current system we live in with like how negative interest rates and all this stuff that the fact that it's dying, that's a fantastic thing. And so like what's being burnt now, you know, with people's accounts and stuff like that and bonds and all this stuff, like, I think, I think generationally, it'll be a great thing that we can actually have. A, you can buy a bond and get some interest from it, right? It can bring more people into the game. But but yeah, that's what I would say. I would say if you're a trader and like you're going through like some hard times right now, like I said before, you're, gonna, you're not really a trader. You're not really an athlete until something goes really wrong. When you get to the high level and then something goes wrong and then you build yourself back up. So that's what I would say. If you're trading and you're having a good time right now, like be thankful because a lot of people aren't. And then, yeah. uh, and then also like uh, if you're having a hard time, but you still got some money left, you've done a lot better than most people. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of famous people, a lot of big funds and stuff that are down 50%, stuff like that. You know, those people are not dumb. Those people are smart. You know, they have, they've been doing this a long time. They made a lot of money, but you know, so I have to think of that too sometimes. Cause I I've had a pretty good year, you know, I'm, I'm up a, pretty decent amount of money this year and i look at i look at the PL and i think like i look at the dollars and i'm like this isn't how much i want to make it's not what i want to do but but the opportunities are not there yet to make like to now is more like surviving and so if you're surviving now you know pat yourself on the back because you're doing a good job and and uh you know just keep keep focused because because better time it, i've talked to a lot of people a lot of very high level traders yourself included and this is a hard time like, like it's a, it's a very confusing market. It's, it's very, very confusing. So it's the hardest I've ever seen it in 40 years. Yeah. So like, it's a, that's what I would say, you know, and like, uh, also the last thing I would say about that is, uh, keep yourself grounded. Like, because at the end of the day, we trade to, to have better lives, you know, like we trade to, to, it's not, it is fun. I have a great time doing it, but, but the, the point, like, if you're missing life because of trading, then you're kind of doing it wrong, you know? And the whole purpose of being a trader is that you do have control. And so if you don't want to work tomorrow, don't, right? Cause you don't have to, cause there'll be another trade tomorrow. There'll be one the next day. And if you, if your kid has a sporting event, like go do something else, right? Like go, go hang out with them. Cause there's no point in being your own boss if you don't take advantage of it. So if you're still a slave, to, to like the screen, you're a slave to yourself, then, then what the hell did you want the freedom of trading for anyways, right? So that's what I would say. That's really well done. Matt, 
Any advice? Yeah, that was that was great, Nick. Spoken like a meditator fighter. <laughs> um, yeah, you need to be grounded. You need to be grounded. And then you need to tell me what you're doing to get grounded. Like I, I need to hear exactly what the regimen is. Like people say grounding or things like, nope, we have a strategy. And I could, if you're solid, you're going to tell me what you're doing, how you're sleeping, how you're, what you've learned from your, like, so a regular meditation practice with this gives you the ability to filter out the chaos to the best of your ability. Not that you're not going to be, you're not perfect. Right. But like, you'll have a better edge. And because you don't know how things are going to go, let's invest in something that's going to be around for a while, which is your mind while you're living. So why not learn to do it? Why not learn to build off of something that's thousands of years old and effective and it's only going to make you your better self, really? Like the best part comes through. So, you know, can you use that for your trading? Yes. Can you use that for whatever you're uh, involved in? Yes. It's not going to make you soft. It's not going to make you um, turn into some cartoon. So, if you want to be the best, you have to study with how do the best do it uh, and, and just start doing it. Right. Find a good teacher. Find a good teacher. Find somebody who can explain to you and they're not just giving out large bromides of like things. Like they, they look at you, they talk to you directly. They can explain the things. It seems as if they've learned it. Like if you were learning a violin, I want to learn from someone who's better than me in violin or whatever. Um, and they can teach me. So I'm interested in that. I'm interested in helping people be their best, but learn a skill set that they can apply immediately because guess what? You need it. <laughs> You're going to need it. You're going to need it. It's not like, well, maybe someday. Now that someday is right now. And it's like, do you want to wind up metaphorically underwater or do you want to at least be on the roof on the water? You know, like that's the difference between somebody who's cultivated their mind versus like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just light a candle. (laughs) Good luck. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. So everybody, thank you for uh, watching today. Again, um, Matt Lombardo, you can find on Instagram, yoga and swellness. Yeah, you can find me yoga and swellness on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a, like a six weeks meditation course coming up in the next month or so. So give a shout if you're interested, it's going to be over zoom. We can do it. It'll be, you know, short sessions but uh and nick lens is on twitter and uh, of course you can always find us at all at sang lucci if anybody's got any questions but yeah definitely everybody hit up hit up either nick if you have fighting questions or matt if you have meditation questions yeah i I would say i would say this one thing i have i have nothing to sell i mean people actually they they actually they uh, i get asked to do a lot of interviews and i always say no and they're like well you could like do your sponsors and stuff. I'm like, I retired from fighting. So I'm quite happy not being in the public <laughs> eye anymore. So, but the thing that I will say that you guys sh- should do is, is, is I reached out to Chris originally, uh, asked him for some meditation advice. Cause I wanted to make my life better. And he sent me to Matt. And so you guys don't, they're very humble, but you don't understand the level and uh, th- what the teachers you pick matter. They really do. And so I've been fortunate enough to, you know, I have kind of a cool story. I reached out to a lot of traders, very high level traders, Chris being one of them, and they actually spoke to me, you know, and so I kind of got to skip to the front of the line. But if you actually have access to Matt or Chris, you know, and you guys don't use it, um, it's worth more money than you have. I can tell you that. So so take take the damn course if they're offering it to Take Matt's course, right? I'll be there, right? Well, um, me and Nick will be there, right? Like, oh God, this meditation thing again, right? Like watching our breath, like it's tough. It's tough. You, everybody out there who hasn't done it, it's it's not easy, but it's worth it. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris and Nick. It's great to see you again. Yeah, yeah right, course, you guys course. and everybody who's trading, be careful, please. It's it's ten days before the election. Anything is possible. Right. All right, you guys. Bye. Yeah, see you.